Hey everyone, this is Louisa Munson. You might know me as Mrs. M, and you're listening to the highlights of our ebook Should I Move to Portugal, which is celebrating the first five years of our family life in this amazing country. Oh, there she is, Munson here, hot from the morning show. How are you today? Um, reading from Should I Move to Portugal, as Louisa just said there. Uh, my great pleasure to do so. And uh, I shared the introduction yesterday, the opening offering, and um, detailed uh, how it, I got to be at all in Portugal in, in the first place, uh, having considered France and Spain. And we move on now to our first, well, the first place we come to in our journey. And uh, it's Jeresh in the Paneda Generesh, Jeresh, the Paneda Generesh. Uh, the Pane- yes, it certainly. Um, it, it's lovely to have the idea, Generesh, to be thinking of generations of subsequent Munsons living in this incredible country, certainly as you see it in the video here. Uh, and it will be on the cover if you're looking at the podcast as well. This is our first real view of Portugal stopping. Uh, actually, let me read. Let me read. Let me read the book, uh, and then I'll come back and and uh, <laughs> embellish a little bit later on, rather than waffling too much now. So, here we are. Uh, the first page, really, after the introduction, a change is as good as Jerash. Get it? Uh, what better welcome than the cool, fragrant hills of Portugal's Paneda Jerash? Onward from Spain, crossing a deserted and unmanned border. And it was weird. We thought we were going to get stopped and have to show all our documents. There was nobody there late on in the afternoon. New aromas filled our nostrils as the magic bus, our tiny Japanese camper van and escape pod headed for the beautiful Alpinesque Jeresh. Now, the magic bus we bought some years before thinking um, about leaving the UK. (laughs) Actually, between you and me, there were times and there still are times uh, where we fear some catastrophic event, uh, you know, in, in a sort of prepper mindset. It does go through our minds even now. And the Magic Bus, our little camper van, was our escape pod um, to to travel the UK um, or to come into Europe. And that's what happened. We used it to come into Europe and drove to Portugal uh, in the, in our Mazda Bongo, as a Mazda Bongo, which plays a very important part in our journey, actually, and um, will feature later on in this story. But anyway... The, the magic bus it features certainly in this part of the story and uh, we're in we're in the what we call the magic bus which actually if you if you check out a tune called not that one not that version but as a band called magic bus and they recorded a, a tune the eponymous tune uh, magic bus carry us um the lyrics were really prescient and and, and appropriate uh, for our journey carry us to the, even i think the lyrics even say to the new country anyway pine and eucalyptus were certainly evident and furnishing our nascent portuguese olfactory palate yes our developing portuguese palate of uh, a sensory palate the smells of pine and eucalyptus like we'd never smelt them before but there was something else too as i recall our descent into town not chaos that's another story. That's another part of the journey, the descent into chaos. Come back to that later on uh, in this uh, in the reading of the book. It was a long and winding road. The long... <laughs> no, I won't do that to you. And it was here that I discovered what those two extra settings were on the automatic gearbox. You know, the one and two, as well as D and P and, and R. There was one and two. I'd never used them before. Uh, there were That other new aroma as well as pine and eucalyptus, was our gearbox overheating as we enjoyed the view, just blithely enjoying this view, as those of you looking at the picture in on the coffee page or uh, on the um, on the video or on the podcast cover will see. Um, that's the sort of view we experience, so peaceful um, and so alive in our senses as well, not just visually, but as, a, as I say, in our, in our hooters. No, you can't say hooters, can you, to an American audience? Through our noses, through our noses. But um, freewheeling, as it seemed we were doing, down into Jeresh, the what would that be? The capital, the capital town of uh, the Pineda Jeresh National Park. Um, you sh- I should have put it into one or two to say to, to to better take care of the gearbox. So note to self: look after your gearbox. You might need it next morning to drive out of the ridiculously steep hotel car park. And oh my God, it was! I remember getting everybody to get out of the van. <laughs> So just in case we couldn't get up this very, it was okay in the end, but I, I'd never seen 
inclines or, or, or and, and to this day, I'm still amazed at how the Portuguese build car parks underneath buildings with these incredible gradients, these eye watering and white knuckle inducing gradients in and out of car parks underneath buildings. But this was in the hotel car park and it was wild. It was fine going in, but it was a little bit scary coming out. So possibly the wildest part of Portugal, the Pineda Gerais is said by some to be the country's only national park. I'm not sure about that. I've heard of the Sintra Cascais park being called a national park but maybe it's the only official kind of unesco one and is home to endangered species many many uh, incredible uh, examples of, of of wonderful wildlife that uh, uh, those interested in wildlife and, and the wild and rewilding would be delighted to see but here you, you you may get to see the iberian wolf the iberian wild goat and the wind chat bird as well as notable uh, celebrities of the wildness of the Pineda Geresh and safely booked into charming accommodation. It was really fantastic. It was like an Alpine um, cabin that we stayed in as, as one of the outbuildings of the hotel. We took to Geresh's streets on foot, devouring with delight our first pastel donato. You've got to do that, haven't you? On Portuguese terra firma. And should that not be exciting enough for one day, our eyes chanced upon our first praying mantis too. Trouble was, it was perched precariously on a blue lit fly zapper. And me and my lad were looking at it and going, what do we do? We need to tell everybody in this restaurant that a praying mantis is about to get fried on the fly zapper. But no one seemed to care. They're ten a penny, really, uh, in this country. So it, 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 no one seemed to be bothered about the praying mantis. And we, I suppose we were a little emotionally charged as well and maybe taking the situation a little bit too dramatically. Anyway, it was a sight too awkward to bear on such an auspicious day. We made our way home um, to the hotel that night and spent our first night sleeping in Portugal. We still got the pictures to prove it. But the picture you see before you on the podcast cover and on the video here, isn't it beautiful? That is where we stepped out of the van briefly and looked at the wonderful Portuguese landscape, the fragrant hills, as I've called them. And we pondered Portugal for the first time on September the 19th, 2017. Thank you so much for listening and for watching. And we'll be back again tomorrow with another installment. Uh, have a great day. Bye for now. Maybe see you on the morning show or give us a shout at goodmorningportugal.com if you want us to help you feel at home in Portugal. <laughs> So we hope you're enjoying listening to our adventures. Don't forget that Good Morning Portugal is all about helping you to feel at home in Portugal. And if you'd like to know more about how we can help you on your journey, just go to www.goodmorningportugal.com.